Hello and welcome to Light Decay. On today's episode, we're going to look at theology. What is it? Why should we care? And what does it have to do with this guy? And this guy. Our explanation of theology will start like everything starts with, the wheel. Now, a wheel, as you know, has a tire and a rim and its spokes. And if you're like my bike when I was eight years old, baseball cards. But at its center is the hub. And the hub, well, it's the center of everything. Everything revolved ultimately around this hub. Likewise, our theology, whether we realize it or not, drives everything we do. The idea of theology is really more of a, a Western idea, based a little bit on Greek philosophy, a little bit on the Enlightenment. And this idea of putting together all we know about God into a standard, a formalized set of ideas. In this way, it's also very uniquely Christian. Now, it's true, many religions have had thoughts or ideas about God, but actually formulating them into a cohesive unit as beliefs or theology, well, just hasn't really happened. Why? Well, they're not as concerned about what we believe as much as what we do. Take Judaism. Judaism is not so much a set of beliefs as it is a set of behaviors. While in Christianity, we believe right beliefs lead to right actions. In Judaism, it's the reverse. Right actions lead to right beliefs. So what is theology? Well, theology is really the combination of two words. One, theos, which means a God, and the second is logos, or logos, which means words, or ideas. And so you put those two words together, you have theos, God, logos, words, words or thoughts about God. Theolo theology literally is thoughts or ideas about God. We're not really sure who first coined the term theology. Johann Philipp Gabler, a 18th century Bible scholar, was the first one to really give notice for it. Uh, we don't know that he was the first, but eh, we'll give him credit. And for Gabler, biblical theology was more than just what the church said or what people thought. He really wanted to understand the history, the biblical context of what we believed and why we thought what we thought. Now see, the reality is people have had thoughts about God, theology, long before Gabler. In fact, every one of us today, whether we believe in God or not, we have a theology. Some view God as a teddy bear, warm and comforting there whenever you're sick or lonely or needing. Some of us view God as a father, loving but strong and strict, maybe protective. Some of us view God as a grandpa, Grandpa Bob, who gives us five bucks every Christmas and has wise things to say, but you don't exactly want to be around Grandpa Bob all the time. And some of us, we view God like this guy. I must break you. Whatever your view, it ultimately dictates how you relate and how you feel about God, and ultimately, how you live your life. Now, the reality is there are about a million types of theology. There is natural theology, where we look at what is we see in nature and what we can learn from that. There is historical theology, which we understand the history of learnings of the church, whether it's church in the Middle Ages, church during the Reformation, church during biblical times, the modern church, and put those together. There's covenant theology where God operates in covenants or agreements with his people. There's dispensational theology, where God ultimately, over time, interacts with his people uniquely through dispensations or economies. We'll discuss that in a later episode. There's dogmatic theology, which is the compilation of a lot of theologies put together, except really preferring what the church believes and the church says is right or is useful. We'll discuss that in a later episode. And there's practical theology, which is, well, what it says, where we live out practically the important stuff that we believe or should believe about God. And there's systematic theology, where we attempt to organize all ideas and thoughts and resources about God in one cohesive, conformative way. This involves soteriology, ecclesiology, eschatology, any ology you can think of, all of these which we're going to look at in this series, which we'll discuss in like every episode. Now there's two things to note here about theology. One is that God, not us, is the center of it. It's about God, not ourselves. And the second is that the center of theology is the Bible. Now, we'll get into the Bible and its authenticity in a later episode. 
But what I want you to understand is when we talk about the Bible as the primary source, it doesn't mean it's the only source. See, many doctrines like the Trinity, which we'll look at in another episode, or the Nicene Creed, we largely understand because of theologians grappling and coming together to make it understandable to you and I. Now, does that make theologians equal to God? Well, of course not. But it doesn't mean we take 2,000 years of what theologians have thought and studied and looked at as far as God and just toss it away. We can also look around a lot of God's creation to learn how he interacts with his universe and ultimately with us. And we can look at ourselves, who even at our worst and most sinful, God still loves and wants to give everything to. And that says a lot ultimately about who God is and how loving and how patient and how, uh, how much he just puts up with us. And unfortunately, a problem happens when you get us involved in our theology because humans, us, well, we're... We're skewed. Uh, we have a weird perspective sometimes. And that brings us to this guy. Oh, guys, come on. And this guy. Procrustus. He was the son of Poseidon, and he had a stronghold on Mount Cordalis, as we understand from Greek mythology. This lie between Athens and Eleusis. And what we know is that he was known for having this bed, this place where he argued would fit any person in the world. So people would come from miles to see, to sleep in this perfect bed. Well, what they didn't know was that it was this perfect bed because Procrustus, well, uh, he took some liberties to make people fit into the bed. If you were too long, he basically shortened you uh, by cutting your toes, your feet, or whatever he needed to make you fit. If you were too short, well, he just stretched you. Uh, Chinese torture, not good. But the idea being is that he conformed his bed to perfectly fit the person. Yeah, not exactly the Holiday Inn. And what's even worse, Procrustus supposedly had two beds. So if you fit one, it didn't matter. You're in trouble anyway. See, the danger becomes when we take our own theology and shape it around what we see and what we want to believe is true. When we take our own needs, our own desires, and let them change how we ultimately view God. That's why it's so essential to not have us as the center of our theology, but God. But when we do get it right, I mean, our theology is essential. See, as we mentioned before, theology drives behavior. Let's take a theology of atheism, where there is no a concept or belief in God. Well, if that's true, then we're continually looking for norms or for truth, and the reality is, in that case, truth and norms are relative to time and space and people. If your theology denies the sinfulness of man, in other words, you say that, all of us are inherently good, well then, what Jesus did on the cross and his death and sacrifice really isn't necessary. If your theology is polytheistic, which means a belief in many gods, then you will continually each day set out to appease each god and deciding which god will get appeased today in this moment. And you ultimately live a life trying to appease individual gods, not knowing which one is better, or stronger, or more important. Than the other. Lastly, theology helps us to understand scripture. It gives us, gives us guardrails. See, the problem here becomes when we make verses say or mean something, they actually don't mean or say. And so my prayer is that through this series and through these videos and episodes, we'll learn what those guardrails are and we'll see God more clearly through his word and live our lives more in line with what he asks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Like the Cave. Hey, thanks for watching Like the Cave. Like the Cave has been brought to you by these fine people right here. Feel free to follow us or, or like us, I guess, down here, down here below. Each week we'll have a different episode looking at Bible, scripture, church, or different things, well, that we think are important. So check those out. We'll see you next week.